I've been playing soccer my whole life. I've been surrounded in a family of soccer. Every time I'm out on the field, it's just like I feel free. My father has been a professional soccer player back in Romania. I played the first league as well. When we moved to Oxford, the sole premise upon which we purchased the home was to have a flat field in the back of the house. That was to pretty much pass the baton on to Michael and Matthew. Early stages of their lives, you know, three, four years old, they had a big goal in the back of the house and their uh, grandfather teaching them the tricks and the ABCs of this game. It's all about culture. It's the culture of uh, soccer. I was the mom on the soccer field. I was the mom taking them to practices. I was the mom feeding them after. So this has been a unifying thread throughout our lives. He's very technical. He has an older brother that played for the high school as well who's also extremely technical. And that competition between the two brothers really has got him to flourish and he doesn't back down at all. Matthew was diagnosed with cancer. It was a very abrupt and brutal awakening piece of news for us. From there on, it has been a, a difficult, difficult time. The diagnosis was a thunderbolt for all of us. It came all of a sudden. I was 16. I just noticed a tumor in a specific area in August of 2021, and that led me to the doctor's office, which led me right into the emergency room that same night. And then the next day I went in for surgery, and it was just a heartbreaking experience for me and my family. I'm someone who takes pride in taking care of my body and eating well, and just being a, an athlete shut down my mind, it shut down my world. It just didn't really feel it was like it was real. It just left me worried for my future, for everything I had coming up for the season. The moment when I heard the word cancer, it was the lowest point of my life. I think the lowest point for me was when I found out I had to do treatment. When I found out at the end of January, it was kind of like a killer for me because I was, I was kind of getting back into shape. I was kind of starting to feel, you know, myself again. Just kind of, you know, crushed everything. I wasn't able to play in the spring. And I was just kind of asking myself, like, when, when will things get better? When am I going to be healthy again? I had three rounds of chemotherapy. One week I would have five days straight of around seven hours of chemo and then that would follow with two weeks of just having one day of treatment and that, re that cycle repeated three times. So it was a fairly lengthy nine weeks. There was days where I would just hide in my room. I wouldn't be able to leave. I wouldn't be able to talk to anyone. It just left me feeling drained all the time. Uh, my medications were strict and sometimes left me very nauseous, uh, shaky in bed for hours. And even in the hospital, just being around all that medicine was just felt sickening. I had no motivation to be anywhere, talk to anyone, do anything. The only motivation I had was looking to the end where the light was. The way he handled the hospital environment was beyond my, my belief. He was fantastic. I personally collapsed, his mother collapsed. We were morally down and he picked up the pieces and said, guys, we're gonna be okay. Reset. He taught me fortitude. I saw him mature. I saw him build a strength, not just around himself, but around the family. Then April, I ended treatment. I had to get my surgery for my port out at the beginning of May. I was able to start training, able to start getting back into it. Huge shout out to my personal trainer, Steve Parkin, who worked with me. He helped me so much. In the beginning, it kind of started off gradual, and then he started really pushing me, pushing me, pushing me. Throughout the whole summer, I knew it was gonna be all possible for me to be back to full fitness, and I just had a goal to just be there. And by the beginning of the season, I was there. Be able to be out here with this amazing group of kids on this team and I've just been so lucky to share the field with everyone and accomplish what we have accomplished this season. Yes. Oh my God. To come back six months later to play at this level, 
I had parents on the sidelines saying, Mr. Dima, he's better than he has been last year. I think this is phenomenal. I know it, it seems like it's just a belt, but that moment was extremely symbolic. Even for someone like me who's been involved in this game for over 20 years, almost 30 years, it still speaks to me and it still motivates and inspires me just to see what he has gone through and where he is right now. He's aware of his influence, not only as a soccer player, but also as a friend and as a captain. Just that kind of maturity really has, has impressed me a lot. I'm so grateful and happy to be on this field. I love being able to have an impact on other people, on my teammates, to drive them and show them that truly anything is possible wherever you are in life. He relied on the people that cared and loved him, and he had a lot of support around him, like his close friends or the people at school. His coach supported him. He chose, his focus was on getting better. And now it's his choice to share his story because he's at a moment when he feels the love and he feels this moment of success that came through a lot of hard work. And I do hope that his story is a point of light. We hope that his story is going to be empowering to other kids who have gone through maybe difficult moments in different ways.